Welcome to Dwell in the Word from First Reformed Church in Edgerton, Minnesota. Bible readings and devotional commentary to help you grow in faith by dwelling in God's holy word. Here in episode 321 of Dwell in the Word, we're going to be looking at Psalm 13, so let's get into our prayer from the prayers on the Psalms from the Scottish Psalter of 1595, and then get into it. Let's pray. O eternal God and most merciful Father, who quickens things that are dead, of your infinite goodness give unto us quietness of heart, to the intent that we, not being overthrown with the heavy burdens of afflictions that lie upon us, may in our consciences rejoice always in your salvation, and grant, we beseech you, that we may continually addict ourselves to praise and magnify your most holy name, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, our Redeemer. Amen. All right, as I mentioned, we are in Psalm 13, and as we prayed, we are in Psalm 13. So let's read Psalm 13, just six short verses here today. Hear the word of the Lord. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Psalm 13 has us in another Psalm of David, and in this chapter of the Psalter, we find David asking some questions. Once again, the psalmist is clearly facing a difficult circumstance of some kind, and here we see a pretty high level of desperation. And the questions that David asks shows that he might be to a bit of a breaking point here. When we read the first verse, you have to not only appreciate the honesty of David, but I also appreciate that these questions are in Scripture. We know that God does not forget his people. We know that he is slow to anger, that he is abounding in steadfast love. And we're also well aware of the great truth that amidst the circumstances of our lives, God works all things together for good for those who love him. Yet, in the midst of our knowledge of the faithfulness of God, we can often feel like David feels here. And the fact that this is on display for us in God's holy word should embolden us to ask God these questions ourselves when we feel like David is feeling. And we get the idea here that this is not just some short-term situation that David is experiencing as he writes these words. He asks, how long? That isn't a question you would ask if you had just started to experience hardship. You might ask why, but you're unlikely to ask how long until you not only feel like you are drowning, but that you can't tread water any longer. The next question we see reinforces this idea of the long-term nature of what is afflicting David. He asks, will you forget me forever? And then the first two words of this psalm are repeated, how long? And this time we get some powerful imagery to go along with what we will find in other parts of the Psalter. The idea of God hiding his face from David. David feels as though God is no longer smiling upon him. He can't see his face. And it seems as though God is far from him and that God is being passive by not intervening in his circumstances. And this isn't the last time we see this feeling of exasperation driven home for us, because we get those two words, how long, repeated another two times. The psalmist says, how long, four times. And this is a literary device used to make sure that we understand how the psalmist feels. He feels as though God could remedy this situation in just a moment, but he isn't doing it. Instead, God is dragging on indefinitely in his mind. The psalmist wants to be rescued, but it isn't coming. And so as this psalm continues, we get a prayer from David asking God to consider the witness his continued troubles gives. Verses 3 and 4 ask for God to consider his situation, and his reasoning is that he doesn't want his enemy to think that God is not providing for him because he has prevailed over David, And all that oppose him would rejoice. And we see this idea in the Psalms on several occasions. The writers wonder what good it does for God not to rescue them. 
because those who oppose God would think that God isn't providing for his chosen people. They would think that he isn't faithful. But yet, as I regularly point out, this questioning and the concerns coming from the writers of the Psalms, they don't lead them to unbelief or to rebellion. Instead, they turn towards God. And we see this as we have the passage close up. And in verses 5 and 6, David expresses trust in the steadfast love of God. Despite appearances, David knows that God has a special love for his people. And so his heart rejoices in the salvation of Yahweh. And this psalm that is filled with questions closes up with a statement of praise. David is going to sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with him. What a statement of faith here. David is concerned about what is going on in his life, and yet, what does he say? He says, you are a God of steadfast love, and you have dealt bountifully with me in the past. And so you will do so going forward. And so I will sing praises to you no matter what. And as we consider this passage for us today, one of the beautiful things about this passage is how vague it is. We really don't know the circumstances surrounding David in this psalm. And this makes it very easy for us to pray this psalm. Each of us has had a moment where we feel as though God has hidden his face from us. And we want him to intervene. We want him to show himself to us, to show himself to be faithful. But we can come to this psalm and we can find a prayer for those situations and also find a path for us to follow. Amidst our circumstances, we need to remember that God is a God of steadfast love. And we need to remember to rejoice in his salvation. Regardless of what we face, we can know that he has rescued us from sin, death, and hell, and has dealt bountifully with us. No matter what we face in this life, we have been abundantly blessed with salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in any and every situation, we can sing to the Lord, knowing that he has not forgotten us, but instead, he is working all things together for our good and his glory. Let's close up with a word of prayer. O gracious Lord, In moments of despair, we cry out to you. With the psalmist, we pray, How long, O Lord, will our soul struggle in anguish? Hear our pleas, and let your light shine upon us. Restore our hearts that we may rejoice in your salvation. In steadfast trust, we place our hope in your unfailing love, and we sing praises to your name, for you have been bountiful to us. May your presence be our strength, and your mercy our comfort. We pray this all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we're through Psalm 13. We'll take a look at Psalm 14 next time. We will see you then. Thank you for joining us for Dwell in the Word. To learn more about First Reformed Church, head on over to our Facebook page or website, edgertonfrc.org.